So in this video, let's uh, take a look at how these different choices of concentrations to express things in lead to different effects on standard states. So what I want to do is compare and contrast, and I'll start with something we had looked at previously. Namely, that when we consider a solvent, which I'll always be calling component one, or at least I'll try always to call it component one, because it's the one that is going to be most nearly pure, it's always the one that is going to be following Raoul's law as it comes closer and closer to its pure component vapor pressure. So the activity is the observed vapor pressure divided by the pure component vapor pressure. The activity coefficient is the activity divided by the mole fraction. And what Raoul's law says is that in the limit as that mole fraction goes to one, the activity goes to the mole fraction, which implies this. That's, that's Raoul's law. And what we had also seen is Henry's law in the mole fraction standard state. It says the activity is divided by the observed pressure divided by the Henry's constant. And remember, that's the slope of the line of the vapor pressure as the mole fraction is dropping towards zero. So activity goes towards mole fraction in the limit as mole fraction goes to zero. And the activity coefficient is still activity divided by mole fraction. But in this case, that means P2 in the limit as you are decreasing your solute to zero mole fraction goes as mole fraction times Henry's constant. That's why I said it's the slope, right? It's what the pressure looks like as you vary X2 closer and closer to zero. Now, when we think about molality, nothing really changes in the nature of our definition, except that because we will be measuring concentration in different units, per force, the slope of a line which reflects vapor pressure versus concentration is going to be different, right? And so there will be a different Henry's constant, which will indicate by adding another subscript. So this is Henry's constant subscript X for mole fraction. Here's Henry's constant subscript M for molality. It's still the case that the activity is going to go to the now molality, and the limit is that goes to zero. And the activity coefficient, again, subscripted with M, goes to M times, uh, sorry, the, the vapor pressure is going to M times the molality Henry's constant. And you won't be surprised to hear that it works out exactly the same for the molarity. There is a subscript C. We'll use C for concentration, for molarity. Uh, these are all, of course, in some way units of concentration, but historically we use C for molarity. So exactly the same sorts of definitions, exactly the same sort of behavior, but just different numbers will be associated with how many molecules of solute there are in a certain volume of solvent, of solution. And so what is Henry's constant? It's, it's useful to uh, have a better conceptual handle on that. And so let's remember that Henry's constant, it's got units of pressure so here's the, the vertical axis. We, we measure it from looking at the vapor pressure of the solute as a function of some sort of concentration measure. So I've called it Z sub 2 here. Sub 2 to emphasize it's the solute's concentration we're talking about. And it's going towards zero. And there may be some ideal behavior which would say that we are going to be linear in vapor pressure. And if it were uh, an ideal solution, we would know exactly how to deal with that. But in the special case of Z2 equals 1, well, Henry's, Henry's constant is the slope of this line, right? It is what we multiply the concentration times in order to get the pressure for whatever concentration we choose at very small concentrations. So I can extend this line until I get to one in concentration units. So in mole fraction, that is going to be a pure substance. That would be where this line extends to, even though the pure substance might have a different vapor pressure, that would be the extension of this line. In the other concentration units, it's actually, in principle, a reachable concentration. It would be, what would be the vapor pressure for a one mole al or a one molar, so that's either one mole in a kilogram or one mole in a final solution, 
solution where the solute is behaving as though it's infinitely dilute. Right? So even though I'm increasing the concentration as I get up to one molal or one molar, I'm pretending that the solute molecules still don't see each other. The reason it doesn't continue along this line to some extent is the nature of the solution is changing. So we know that physical interactions between the molecules are affecting vapor pressure. And as I add more solute, well, some of the molecules the solute sees are other solute molecules. That, that will be a change compared to infinitely dilute when all it sees is other solvent molecules. So Henry's constant then is a, an indication of what it would be like if you really had a concentrated solution, one molar, one molal, but none of the solute molecules interacted with each other. It's hypothetical, but it's useful. And so the Henry's law constant strongly reflects then the intermolecular interactions between the solute molecules and the surrounding solvent. And so what's activity? That's maybe the next question. So deviation of activity from whatever concentration you're working in. So that is, you get an activity coefficient different from one. And when is the activity coefficient different from one? It's as this actual behavior curve starts to deviate from this linear curve. Okay? And so an activity coefficient greater than one, that's not what's shown on this slide here. That would imply that the deviation is increasing the vapor pressure, right? Because if you work through these equations, an activity coefficient greater than one means that you must have a pressure greater than the Henry's law constant. And why would that happen? So the vapor pressure being greater than you expect at infinite dilution implies that more molecules are being pushed out of the solution. If it's a good way to think about it, right? They're going into the gas phase. And so apparently they, they like themselves less than they liked the original solvent molecules. And then on the other hand, a coefficient less than one, so that's actually what's shown here, right? Because the actual vapor pressure is not going up as fast as Henry's law would dictate implies that with increasing concentration, there's a greater desire to stay in the solution. All right, and so here's a chance to do a little self-assessment to try to get a, a feel again for these different uh, concentration scales. And so I'll let you read the question here and think about it and take a shot at it. Okay, in this instance, I, I won't take a long time to read all this text. You can read it for yourself and you can see if it agrees with what you uh, worked out and hopefully it's all clear. Instead, I think I'll just uh, I'll foreshadow the next exciting video in the series and that is determining solute activity.